Okay, so I must remember not to or double check what system I'm going to type reboot in on. Uh, actually, shut down the recorder. So, what I'm going to do is to um, just show you something I've done to uh, is it profile to just no, it wasn't it? it was bash RC. Is I've put in this backslash u and at sign in front of the backslash h, so that well at least for the um, ordinary user, if I become the root, it doesn't show it. Perhaps I should do it on that one, being so it's probably more important. Um, just put that one in here for the root. So. So the backslash u inserts the user, if I put the at symbol, and then backslash h is the host name. Okay, so I should have been super user to do that. So now if I do sudo su, you can see the host name now, now appears next to the username so right gonna carry on with font config next uh, and also uh, before I carry on let me just check that the user ns has been set so I can do that by looking at the inbuilt config that's in the kernel which is that file there and grep for user underscore ns and you can see it's now set so that means that bubble wrap is all set up so let's carry on w get paste So it says um, if you remove the disabled docs, then you must have SGML and text live installed. Um, so I'm going to do that after I've installed text live, but not now. So I'll leave that in. Let's do configure and make. Run make check. It does say that one test will fail uh, if the user namespace is not there, but obviously we've just checked it is there, so that particular one shouldn't fail at all. However, it seems we have got one failure run test sh. Um, so it's not obvious what's failed. Looks like we can view this file. Uh, let's do use less to see what's failed. Oh, right. Okay. It does need curl. And right. So that means that when we rebuild this with curl, we would expect that failure to pass. So I'll put a little note against my spreadsheet about that. One failure due. One test failure due to missing curl. So that will remind me that I should definitely see an improvement on the test results when curl is installed. So let's do an install. Make install. If you did not remove the disabled docs, which you didn't, we can add the documentation in here, preformatted. Uh, 
I should do this with sudo minus e actually. So that's the documentation installed and we can tidy that one up. Some configuration configuration information there if you need to read that. So we'll shut that one down and start on the Xorg libraries. So what we start off with is a steering file which not only tells wget what files to download, um, it also has the signatures for each file so they can all be checked. So we can fetch them and check them with these commands here. We'll just wait for that to finish. While it's doing that, I'll just mention what it says here that this um, got a script to install multiple packages and there's several ways of making sure they get installed because um, obviously you appreciate where is it we're a normal user and you require root to install the packages. So it says you can run the entire script as root, which is obviously not recommended. Sudo as we've done, which is probably the best option, or to use su minus c format of su which will obviously ask for the password each time so that, that could get quite onerous sudo will do the same but it only asks for the password every i think five minutes by default it will time out remembering the password but as you recall we've set the no password option so it should just run through um, automatically so if we copy this in it won't actually do anything but it will or visually do anything but we've now got a function called as root in the memory which this script here will use. Um, it says some libraries come with a test suite. If you wish to execute them, you can comment the RM RF below, or you can uncomment the make checks. That sounds the best option, and then run this grep to check them afterwards. So first of all, we run a shell, a subshell that will exit on the first error. So if any of these packages fail, it won't carry on trying to install the rest. It will fail immediately. Run the script in. You can see it's going to process each of those files uh, one by one. And I've just realized I didn't uncomment the line to do the testing. So I'm going to let this run through rather than crash it out and leave it in an unknown state. And I'll rerun it again afterwards. I don't think this takes too long, probably about a minute or two.
Okay, so it took a little bit longer, maybe a minute too long than I thought, but not to worry. I'm going to recall that command. Just go back to uh, the bit that if I can see, I can't even see it. Uh, pop the as root make install. All oh, right, looks like Bash has removed it. So I need to paste that in. Because it was a remark, it's actually not kept it in the history. So I'll just paste it in, remove that, and rerun this. Wait another couple of minutes, and hopefully these will pass as well. Okay, so that looks like that will work. The tests obviously passed that were run. So we'll do exit now to exit the shell, we, the subshell we started. And yeah, it says there about some extra options to use with FOP, which we'll do when we rebuild these to get the PDF documentation. Uh, if you've chosen to install Xorg into user, no further configuration is necessary. Okay, so I'm not going to even bother reading the rest of it. So that is the Xorg libraries. Let's move on to libx cvt now. Fetch this. And no special options here, we just copy and paste and install the package and copy 
is that to the spreadsheet uh, and tidy up. So now XCB util. Uh, in fact, I think these next few are quite similar. So what I'm going to do is fetch them all at once. As you can see, they're all related. They're all XCB util packages. Um, and I'm pretty certain they're, if not identical, there might be the odd one that's slightly different, but just to speed things up, because they're quite small and therefore quite tedious to install. XCBU till util image. Let's get that one in there. Util image. Till image. Oh, key sims. Where's that gone? Sims got that one there. Render util. Uh, what's that one? And WM and cursor WM. So, okay, so if I fetch all of those, okay, so the first one's XCB util. So this is configure and make and sudo make install. Yep, so that's okay. So that's that one done. Next one, XCB util image. So I'll just recall that configure command, double check it. All right, so this one's got a test in the middle of it. So um, I won't do the make install. I'll do the up to the make, then run the test. That's okay. Now I'll do the sudo make install, and that's that one. Then key sims.
So search for the configure command with the make install. There it is there, exactly the same commands. Save a load of finger work. And that's done. Shut that one down. Now I've got XCB render util. And once again, as you can see, it's the same commands configure xorg config make and sudo make install that's done xbu tool wm And again, same commands, double check them. All done. And lastly, XCB cursor, a uh, util cursor. Yeah, once again, same commands. So that's done, that was a little bit easier. So the next package we've got to install is Misa. And Misa brings in a few dependencies and these dependencies themselves bring in maybe a hundred or so dependencies, perhaps even more. Um, and many of these packages are going to be used by other packages. So rather than do what I've tended to do up to now, just partially build some packages um, and come back to rebuild. And I think I'm going to try and build as much as I can with Misa and it could take me into other packages that I might have left to do later on but I'm hoping that it will reduce the number of rebuilds that I'll have to do. Um, the only downside is that it can get quite complex um, so I'm just going to have to hope that I can keep on top of things. Um, so I'll start with the required dependencies. So XORG libraries, we've got that installed now. Uh, libdrm is the first one. We've got, and you can see already, we've got dependencies that are required. Cairo is needed for testing. That needs libpng. So, okay, libpng is um, like a standalone package. It hasn't got any dependencies, so we can get on with building this one. So, let's... Oh, that's strange. Oh, I well, know why. It's because I put the machine to sleep. So, let's reconnect. And recommended patch to include animated PNG functionality required for using system lib PNG in Firefox, Monkey, and Thunderbird. So we'll take this as well. So it looks like the patch and the download have got slightly different versions, but I presume that's not going to make a difference. So we're installing 
1.6.40 of lift PNG but the patch is relating to a previous version but that looks like that's worked okay so it's configure and make run some checks Yep, that's fine. Let's become root. Uh, and install the package. That's done. So Cairo also needs Pixman. Needs well, GTK2. I think something we're going to have to build anyway, um, even though it's optional here at the moment. Let's go and have a look at this. GTK Plus needs AT SPI2 core, it needs DBus. So, XORG libraries we've got for the test, we need DBus Python. It needs Dbus itself as well. Um, so there's a circular dependency here. Yeah, many tests are disabled until both Dbus Python and PYG object have been installed. They must be run as a privileged user. So it looks like might have to install dbus as it is and then come back to reinstall it after these have been installed and then we can do the test properly then. So um, let's do that now. Copy link address. So doing dbus. Again, dbus and then rebuild after dbus python dash one dot three dot two and py object. 3.44.1 So let's fetch that So we've got big configure command here Let's cross check those options and any others. So disable Doxygen Docs, that's fine. Disable XML Docs, so let's have a look. I can't remember if we've got XML TO, that's one to build. So do a search. Oh, yeah, it's just to rebuild it after FOP, so it may not actually work properly. Um, we can remove it and see what happens. Uh, with system D user etc equal no.
So this was system D with system PID file. Oh, I can't actually see that one. So that's not actually there, the looks of it. Enable tests. Do not use on a production build, okay. And that one do not use on a production build. Enable asserts. That's for debugging code, so I won't bother with that. So all I've done is remove disable XML dot docs. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if it will work because FOP's not installed or XML TO, but it might do. Well, that looks okay, so let's see if it builds. Looks like it did. Um, we're not using Dester install. If you're building your system in truth, we did not start the daemon yet. But want to compile some packages that require dbus, generate the dbus you right. So we're not building the truth and we haven't started the daemon yet either. So let's run this command. Oh sorry, we haven't installed yet. Make install. Okay, let's rerun that command. Yep, that seems to have worked. If using eLoginD, create a symlink to var lib dbus machine ID file. Is that a, that's not a dependency, but we will be using it. So let's put that in now. That's the root. Okay, yeah, so it is pointing at something, so that's okay. Um, many tests are disabled, so we can run the tests that are there, but obviously some won't run. Let's have a look to see what does work. Well, it's skipped 11, so let's put in there's none tested there at all, or no tests found to run. Um, if you want to run the unit regression test, configure requires additional parameters to expose additional functionality in the binaries are not intended to be used in production build. So we won't run that. Uh, so down to configure, let's become the root. The configuration files listed above should probably not be modified. If changes are required, you should create these files to make any changes to these files. If any packages install a debus service outside the standard directory, that directory should be added to the local session. For example, user local share debus can be added by performing the following commands as a root user. So we can put that in. As an example. And Right, there's startup scripts, so let's go into BLFS and install them. BLFS boot scripts. Now, I'm not sure if this will work because we've just started a session, I thought, so I might have to do a reboot. Well, it says it started, there didn't seem to be any errors. Let's have a look at the kernel log, there's nothing there at all. Right, so that only starts the system wide. Dbus daemon, what did we start? Well, I'm not sure if that's system wide or for the user. Um, so it says there about how to start a single session for the user. Normally you don't need to worry about that, so Hopefully we won't need it for uh, anything else we need to do. Um, but what I think I will do is come out of this. Um, right, go back in. 
and reboot. Um, just so that I'm sure that the D-Bus is running. I'm going to monitor the boot up screen to make sure there's no errors on, on the boot up screen when the scripts are started. So it's just come up with the logo and the grub prompt. So start it booting. Yep, it started OK. There's no errors there. So let's go back in. Another D message. There's no errors there at all. So I think that looks OK. So let's now do the two dependencies. So dbus python is the first one. And as you can see the requirement is dbus. So let's do glib next. That needs pcre2. So that's a standalone. So let's go to sources. Yes. Um, I need to remove the bus source and then get PCRE2. Uh, like I said, I'm not installing Valgrind and libedits outside the BLFS book, so ignore that. Let's run this in. Let's have a look at these. So these are all options that are in that configuration command. And enable JITs are there as well. Okay, so there's nothing to do there. Build the package. And test it. That's OK. And install the package. That's all done. OK, so that can go. So next we've got optional fuse. Could be useful for other things. Let's have a look at that one. Copy link address. Um, all right, this has got a dependency here actually for tests. So let's get that next. And this has got a load of dependencies itself. And you can see quite quickly we're getting buried down many levels of dependencies. So let's start with this. So these are all going to be fairly quick, I would have thought, to install. Just tedious because there's lots of typing to do. So some other dependencies here, uh, sorry, options, but I don't think we need to change any of those. So let's install this. No test suite, so sudo install it, that's done. So that was edit tables. Uh, shut that one down. And next we've got one called packaging.
So we build it and install it. So assuming PY test is installed, but no other optional, but the other optional dependency is not. Oh, sorry, I didn't see this. Okay. PY test, is that what we're trying to install? It is. So we'll have to reinstall this to test it properly. We build after py test. So it says how to test it without the other optional dependency there. So I'll leave that until we've done PY test and then we can come back to do that one. Um, so we've installed it. So let me tidy it up. And now we'll do hatchling. Uh, all right, okay, there's more dependency. I'm not used to these module layouts, they're slightly different. Let's remove that and let's get to paths back next. Uh, this needs PY testing, PY test as well. Okay, so I'll have to rebuild this one as well, unfortunately. Back. So build it and install it. And that's done. So we can't build that, uh, test that at the moment. And we'll come back to do the test to prove that it's a good bit of code that's been compiled. And finally, we've got Pluggy. So again, this needs PY test. Okay, this needs another dependency. Right, and this is needing a load more, so we're going deeper and deeper. So we've got packaging installed, typing extensions next. So that one hasn't got a test suite. So let's put that in instead of Pluggy. And we'll build it and install it. Uh, back here then we've got 
some optional ones for testing so again for testing purposes i'm going to have to install these and these are going to have their own dependencies uh yeah quite deep dependencies as well by the looks of it so curl did we install curl in the end No, okay. So we're going to have to stick this in with some dependencies that are on these as well. Um, Brotly requires CMake, which requires curl. <laughs> so I think curl needs to be installed and then. it'll have to be reinstalled. So let's do that now. Um, let's paste that in. Build after all dependencies built. So we'll attempt to fix all these dependencies. It might not be possible, but we'll see what we can do. Um, so configure. Let's see if there's any other. Yes, there's quite a few extras here. Enable threaded resolver, CA pass certs, open SSL. Kerberos 5 we haven't got, so we won't need that. Um, we won't use GNU TLS. Don't need to do that. This has SSH support to curl, so I presume that would need the SSH2 library, which it would do, so that's not installed yet, so I'll have to make a note that that's important including nib ssh2 so we'll leave that out for the moment enable ares so we, that's another dependency yeah so i'll make a point of that and see ares and that's it. So we'll just accept the default configuration. Okay, so there's quite a few options that are set to no there because we haven't installed a lot of dependencies, but let's build it. And the test, it says a lot of um, output be duplicated many times, complaining that the Python module in packet is missing or will be skipped. Okay, so this looks like it might take a few minutes.
Right, that's finished. It ran 1301 out of 1611 and all those 1301 passed, so that's good. So let's now install it. And it looks like we can run some tests here. Inspect the local created trace files. Okay, so that did something. And that's done something as well. So debug dump dot text. which contain version information. Um, not quite sure what to look at, but it looks like it's done something. Um, and d.txt. And again, that looks okay. And this is the one with the timestamps, as you can see there. So that looks okay as well. So I'll tidy that up. Uh, remove that. So I've got that marked to rebuild. So I'll get rid of that for the moment because there's going to be too many tabs otherwise. Go back to Git. Um, oh, I see. I was going to go to do Brotley next, which was part of curl. And that needed CMake, which is part of Brotley. And that needed curl. LibArchive, I think we've done. Yep, libuv, okay, that hasn't got any dependencies, so that can be installed. Right, the auto gen command below fails if the AC local environment variable is set as specified in XORG 7. If it's used, AC local needs to be unset for this package and reset for other packages. So let's have a look to see if it is set, and it doesn't look like it is at the moment. So I'm pressing tab and there's nothing coming up. And if I do that, you can see it's uh, empty. So that shouldn't cause a problem. I'll just put all these commands in. So that's done. Let's do make check. Run some tests. They're running in parallel, so that's quite good. We were up until then. Uh, maybe that was the compiling of the tests, but this seems to be running single threads now unfortunately Okay, so that has passed. It says one test passed. It looks like it's a whole test, but there's individual tests within that. But there's no failures, so let's install. And that's fine. So we'll shut that down. Back to CMake NGHTTP. Recommended lib 
XML2. The following are only used if building a full public package instead of only the main libraries. Um, so I'm not sure. Oh, and, all right, I see. Enable lib only. Only build lib ng http2. Make the switch if you'd like to build the example applications, Python bindings, or the C++ ASIO library. Well, I assume that's not necessary, so that means we don't need all of these dependencies, these optional dependencies, um, even though I think nearly all of them will be installed later on. I'm not going to do that now because, as you can see, the dependency hierarchy is getting quite uh, deep. So rather than complicate things anymore, I'll just install the libraries. Uh, if we do find that we need to install the full package, then we can do that. But I imagine that, I presume it's a, a server, is it? Uh, no, I'm not sure what it is actually. Um, well, we'll see. So we'll just copy this as it is. There's no test because it needs CUnit, but that's outside the scope of PLFS as it says there. And you can see it's in uh, slightly bolder and lighter blue. So that's done. Make install. Okay, so that's nghttp. And I'll put a little note next to this saying that only the libraries were built. Just so we know if that is important. So that's that done. Back to CMake. So optional. All right, GCC for G Fortran. Now this was a dependency for another package. So that's interesting. So that is something we probably need to do then. And then we've got a cyclic dependency here because we've got Git. So I think what I'll do is install CMake as it is without the optional dependencies um, and yeah see this needs Qt as well which we haven't got yet which was, is going to be done much later on um, so then I think I'll rebuild CMake after Qt I think it's probably the best thing to do a bonus is I think yeah with Q Building off the QT, you get a, a little GUI program which might be important to some people. So, um, yes, I think I'll build this as it is and just put a note to rebuild it later. Rebuild after all optional. Builds. including QT. Right, so let's fetch this. I'll copy that properly.
So, okay, so let's do the Z first of all. And then the bootstrap command will check the commands here system libs, no system JSON, CCP, bundled version. Is that not an option? No. Libar hash. So that's an external option. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's JSON CPP, right? Okay. So that's why these are built. So no system curl lib archive. Okay. So although curls recommended, in fact, all of these, we can turn them off. Um, but we've actually got them installed. So we don't add that. We don't need to add that. We can't add the Qt GUI because we haven't got Qt installed, but we can add this option to build multiple jobs. So I imagine we're putting the number of cores we've got available. So I'll put 16 in there and let's see how that runs. Okay, let's run, so let's build it now. Okay, that's built. We can test some results with this command. So I'm going to time this again. Get an idea of how long it will take. And I've just got to change the number of jobs for the tests to the number of cores available and start that testing.
Okay, so that has finished with 100% pass, so that's good. Uh, we don't need to investigate any problems, luckily. So all we need to do now is to make install. And that's that package done for now. And I've got that down to rebuild later on. So go back to Brotley. So Brotley we can install now. Uh, paste. So first we've got a set, then there's no other options for building this, so we can just copy and paste this in. Test what we've built, there's no failures, and now we can install and go back one. If desired, build and install Python 3 bindings as the root users. So I'm not sure I'll ever use them, but we can put them in because we can, I suppose. Okay, so that's done. That's Brotley, back to curl. C Ares is next. Requires just C make, so we can install this. Oh, I didn't copy that properly. Right. So quite straightforward instructions. That's built, sudo make install, and it's done. Shut that one down, and the next we've got is GNU TLS. So I'm not sure, I think this is just optional for using it instead of OpenSSL. Um, I'm not sure if it's used elsewhere or if it's just a, an alternative drop-in for um, OpenSSL. It looks like there's lots of options to build out, so I might put that off until I'm more sure if we need that, because um, I won't be building... Um, curl with that. So let's go to libidn2 next. Let's see what gtk doc needs. So that's got a few Dependencies, uh, let's just look at that again. All oh, right, yes, this is for API documentation, so this probably doesn't need, need to um, build it. It does say this does not mean you'll not have any documentation, it's just for the API, like for programming and development, so we don't need that. Um, Git is optional, um, but that's what we're trying to install. So I think 
I'll put this in and then rebuild it after Git. So let's put that in. If IDN rebuilds after Git. So we don't need to do anything else to this. Test it. That's all okay. Uh, that actually says there's nothing tested there, but there's three tested there. So that's fine. And we can install it. libpsl is next. So we've got the two requirements, libuni string. Let's check that one. Yep, that's installed. So we can build this Valgrind, we don't do that. Okay, so again, there's nothing we need to change here. Run some tests. All okay, no failures. And we'll install it. Done. So next we've got lib SSH2. So CMake can be used instead of configure, libcrypt I think we've installed and OpenSSH we've installed so we've got the dependencies for that. So let's put this in. If you want to test the package, right, I, I see. So, um, Docker is needed for some tests and OpenSSH for some, some tests. If you want to test the pa package, exclude the test requiring a static library. Um, disable Docker tests, yeah, we haven't got that because it's outside of LFS, so that's okay. Put that in. And we'll install, uh, build and install, uh, configure and build rather the package. Then we can run make check. Okay, I've got two failures. SSHD. Let's have a look at the test.log. SSHD executable. I'm 
I'm not sure why these have failed, but it looks like it's something to do with the keys rather than a code problem. Username, public key, combination invalid. Um, so whether this is something that this Docker program tests instead, uh, I'm not sure. executable yes yeah, so I couldn't say for sure um, let's run it again see if it fails again in the same way yes it has um, let's try running it as the root. No, it doesn't seem to have made any difference. So I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, but as it's just the key, it seems to be reporting about it doesn't indicate so much that is a problem with the code so I'll just do make install and tidy that up so mit Kerberos not installing we've got nghttp now we've got open ldap installed um, Samba is a runtime option, so we'll be installing Samba either separately or as a direct de dependency of something else. Um, I have a quick look at it now, see what it needs. Oh yes, it's got a great deal of dependencies, so that will probably be something I'm installing separately. Um, optional for running the test suite. Let's have a look at Apache. I imagine this is going to have a few dependencies. Yes, it has. Although most of these we've got. So I think we can do that next. And then S tunnel after that. So let's get Apache up. So I'm not going to be installing the daemon part. It's just whatever we need to get the tests running. Um, we've got PCRE installed. So we'll go for APR util. This needs APR. So we can get going with this one. So there's no extra options here. So I'll build it. And now we can test it.
Right, so that has finished. Um, there didn't seem to be any errors. There's no reports, final report, but it looks okay. So I think we can install now. So that's APR complete. Um, Barkley DB we've done. Maria DB. Uh, let's have a quick look at that. This is probably something that we'll install at some point. Um, and it looks like most of these again have been installed. There's a few extra there, so I guess we can go and do this. So we've got CMake lib event. Pretty sure we haven't got that. Link certainly hasn't changed color. No. So that's a recommendation. Okay, so we've got a said and configure. There's no other options for the configure. Okay, we don't want the API documentation, so we'll just run make verify. Does say six tests in every suite related to regress SSL C and regress HTTP are known to fail due to incompatibility. Some tests are related to regress DNS are also known to fail intermittently due to insufficient test timeouts. Okay, so we may see some problems here.
Okay, so there were those failures there. Um, you can see the seven, the same number it says here uh, in in every test suite related to regress SSL. So that's okay. So let's install, and that's done. And I've oh, got it on the list. Close that one down. Uh, Lib event optional boost. So this needs which and ICU seventy three dot two. Now I have to be careful with some packages and ICU is one of them because I think in previous versions of BLS there has been different versions of ICU and there are different versions or there used to be of other packages. So I have to be aware that you are looking at the right one. So that has been installed. Um, there's no indicators against it saying it needs to be rebuilt later or anything. So that's okay which we've got open MPI is an external library so we can install this as it is. So let's copy that into the spreadsheet. Okay, that's downloaded. Let's extract it. Right, so the first thing we've got to do is to apply this said, which fixes a problem with the current GCC. Then we need to the package can be built several jobs running in parallel, so first is the bootstrap command. And then we actually build it with this command here. So I'm going to time this and also check to see if there's any other options that might need to be set for our situation. Uh, looks like it's just telling us sure as Python 3 is used if Python 2 is installed. I don't think we've installed that yet, but it, I doubt if it would do any harm to actually put this in. And I'll just change the number of threads to use, number of cores to 16, and wait for that to finish. Oh, okay. Wrong library name. Okay, I'll leave that out then. Not sure why that didn't work. Maybe maybe it behaves differently if Python two is installed.
Okay, so that has built. Now I can run some tests. So regression tests. This first one to run by the looks of it. Uh, time. So they all pass, then it says to run every library's regression test, issue this command. But a few tests may fail, they take a very long time. Over 119 SBU at J4. So it should be a quarter of that with 16 threads in theory, um, which is going to be about 30 SPUs, which is. Uh, probably about half an hour, so it's not too bad. Um, you'll have to decide if it's worth it if you want to uh, run them. Um, so I'll time is to see how long it does take. And the J2 would go here, I imagine. It doesn't specifically say, but I think it would go there. So let's start that and it looks like, oh no, I thought it was failed. Oh right, I see, so it's it's done time on the push D part, so I'll just have to keep an eye on the clock to see how long this takes. Well, that's certainly quite quick. Um, that didn't seem to be using all cores either, so I'm not sure what happened there. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure what I can do about this. There's not much other information. You should use the minus JN switch to speed them up. Well, this first command changes directory or puts pushes it onto the current directory onto the stack and then changes into status. Then it runs the B2 command just by itself with J16, and then it just returns to this directory. There's not much else to do that, that could go wrong. Um, so I'm not sure if that's broken. I mean, it can't be any dependencies because there are barely any. Uh, I'm not sure why that was so quick. It obviously hasn't done uh, 120, uh, yeah, 120 SPUs worth. Um,
One thing I suppose I could try is to do an LD config in case there's some libraries that need to be loaded. Um, another thing I thought of earlier is I haven't run the command to remove the um, the LA archives since I created that file, I can't remember what it was, is it S bin was it? Um is it remove clean no To look up on on the um Yep, let's do that the quickest. Uh, let's get another window open. Uh, BLFS 12.0. So, I looked all archives, that was it. Remove LA files, use Raspin. Okay, so sudo. So I just need to run this. I'm sure, yeah, it's done quite a lot. So if this command fails again, then I don't know what else to do, to be quite honest. Um, but at least the other tests ran OK. So push D status, V2, pop D. So I really want to do time on this part of it. See how this goes now. Okay, yeah, so that's failed in the same way, and I don't I really don't know why. So I'll just accept that the uh, basic boost build regression test ran and was successful, and just go ahead and install the package. It could be that there is another dependency possibly that's not installed that would enable those um, tests to run. That's a possibility. Maybe something that's not listed here. 
could be this open MPI even. That's a possibility. So anyway, apart from that little hiccup, boost is installed. So we'll close that down and we move on to lib AIO. So there's no dependencies on this one. So build it, run some tests. That's all done. Let's now install it and let's complete. So, next, LibXML we've done, PAM we've done, LZO we've got, we're not doing Kerberos, PCRE we've done, Ruby next. This may be a biggie. Right, graph is, I think, is, yeah, I've got lots of dependencies. So I think, uh, let's take a quick look at these ones. So that can be installed. Rust C needs C make and curl, LibSSH, LVM. That's a big one. GDB. Git required by the test suite. Right, I think I might avoid the, this package for the moment. Um. Oh, I don't know what to do actually if they are optional. Oh, this such a trend using the system roof, it's already installed. Oh, right, okay, so maybe I'll do that. I'll install without. Uh, oh, hang on, this is Ruby, isn't it? Sorry. Is that base Ruby? Instead, right, okay. Um, take another look at this one. I think what I'll do is build Ruby without the optional packages and then build it later because a couple of these, these two in particular, I think this one will be all right. TK, yeah, that, oh, that just needs libraries, which we've got now. Um, they've got quite a few other dependencies, and I think Rust C had a dependency back to Git, which is what we're trying to do. That's in the sort of path, if you like, yeah, required by the test suite. So I think just installing Ruby now. And rebuild after um, graph is and Rust C and TK. 
are built. So let's extract Ruby. Uh, so the other options. Okay. So configure. Is that place for disable install doc? This switch disables building and installing our doc indexes in C API documents. So let's put that in for now. Doing this on the RDoC indexes, so I think we can avoid the API options. I'm not sure what the RDoC is, Ruby documentation, maybe. Let's see how I go with that. Let's have a quick look at this. Install dock, no, that's okay for now. So let's build it. Right, following extensions are not compiled. Fix the problems and remove these directories and try again if you want. So it doesn't look like it's failed, it's just saying that it hasn't found something that it might want to have built. So we'll carry on. So build the CAPI documents, don't need them at the moment. Uh, it says we need to install it before we can test it. So let's do make install. Um, looks like maybe it does need that fix then. Oh, did I not install? Yeah, I didn't install libyaml. That's what it's complaining about. Right, okay. So I need to quit this. Remove the source and build libyaml before Ruby. Uh, so copy. Awesome. It didn't quite look like an error, that, that message. It was in yellow as well, or orange. So. so this is straightforward. Run some tests. That's all OK. And install. Okay, so now let's go back to building Ruby. So we'll start from scratch again. Make sure we're not running with any tainted software. So let's see if we can bring back that command I used before. That one there. Hopefully that message we got at the end won't be there this time. OK, 
okay, that's better. It's uh, actually put out some... Oh no, this is the same as before, wasn't it? It was the make that was the problem. So let's see how that goes. That's a bit better, so let's now install it. That's okay. Uh, so now we've got make minus k check. There are over 25,000 tests. Some tests relate to IPv6 may indicate errors. If the tests are running in the direction of the world right of all component EG10, and several additional tests may fail. If you test my fail due to system configuration expectations. So we'll run the test, but we'll expect some failures basically. As long as there's not an undue number of failures, then uh, we should be okay. Okay, so despite the fact that it said something failed, it actually has reported that it has completed. Um, it does say to try again without the minus J option, which I didn't put in. So whether it's because it's running the test in parallel, I don't know. So I'm going to just try that again with minus J1. And see if there's any difference. Uh, it's running in parallel, actually, the looks of it. Uh, we'll see if it gets any further.
well it seemed to be going all right until a certain point um, bundle error So these sort of errors could be because the dependencies are not in the optional dependencies installed. That is a, a definite possibility. Um, it did seem to get further. I'll just run it again without the minus J1 to see if there is any difference. In fact, even if it will carry on where it left off or if it will start again. Looks like it started again. Uh, yeah, it's crashed, so it doesn't like running in parallel, the looks of it. Um, I don't think there's a lot else can do at the moment, being as there's some of the dependencies are missing, even though they're optional. Uh, they may well be needed. So um, I'll install this for now. It is going to be reinstalled. Uh, right, sorry, it is installed already. So, yeah. And have I got a note saying this be rebuilt? Yes, I have. So I'll leave that for the moment. And close that down. Go to MariaDB again. And we need Sphinx next. Wow, this has got quite a few dependencies. Uh, are these all Python modules? Are they? Oh, right. Okay, so these shouldn't be too onerous. Um, text line for tests and py test. Okay, I may need to rebuild MariaDB after all then. Uh, what needs MariaDB APR? Util and Apache needs it. Okay. Um, what should I do here? Well, we need PY tests and that's what we're trying to build. So I think I'll leave Sphinx for now and I'll have to rebuild MariaDB after Sphinx has been installed. Let's have a look at this one. So this can be put in. So let's do that one next. Got here, enable drivers that were installed by default in previous versions. Right, I don't think we'll bother with that. So I'll just configure and make Now let's install it. That's complete.
So that's Unic ODBC. So let's do Maria DB for now. And, and so I'll have to reinstall it to get the Sphinx option in. So Maria DB and rebuild after Sphinx. Requires PY test. So let's download it. It's downloaded. I can actually do the group and user that's required to exist for my SQL. Yep, that's downloaded. So let's extract it. So CD Maria DB, create build directory, and we've got this huge configuration command here for CMake. Let's see if there's any other options with embedded server is on with extra char sets, complex skip tests on. Supported an additional setup without server on. Use a switch if you don't want the server. I'd like to build a client only. Um, I'm trying to think if there would be anything that would use it. Um, I guess, for example, if I was installing MythTB, which I've done a video on, that does need a server, so that could become part of this Linux, Linux from scratch build. So, um, I think I'll leave that out. I presume that's not in here. Yeah, I can't see it. So, I think I'll just accept those options. I can't think off the top of my head if there's anything else in the Linux from scratch, uh, beyond the Linux from scratch books that I know that would need the server, but there may be, so it's probably a good idea to install it anyway, just in case. And any, at any rate, it's going to be reinstalled, so. And actually thinking about it, maybe I could just install Yes, I think what I'll do is install, let's start this again, install MySQL without the server and then install it next time with the server. So I'll put that command back in and add in this option to not build the server, so I'll have to remember that I haven't built the server this time. I'll make a note of that because I probably will forget. Server not built, but build on second build. Right, okay, so now we can build this, compile it, and it says it takes 8.4 SBUs, so, oh yeah, I don't think that's going to take long. I 
wonder if that's barely a one SPU actually, but then it's not building the whole lot, it's not building the server, so it could be why it was a lot quicker. So let's run some tests. That's 100% pass. More extensive set of tests can be run with the following. Um, that's 24 SBUs with n equals 4. So again, that should be a quarter of that with n equals 16. So I'll time that. set an option to not do the test skip tests on oh no, that's the C tests push D MySQL test can't see that there is it on the directory above yes it is so right they haven't given us the instructions to go back up to the previous directory with the looks of it because the current build directory hasn't got MySQL tests. So let's do that again. Right, I'll have to copy again the looks of it. So this should be, well that's got to be 16 in my case. Obviously number of cores you've got, you change it. And this should be dot dot forward slash no, it's still not working. SQL test. Oh, and then now it's not finding MTR in that directory. Sure, what's gone on here? So it definitely built okay, although it was rather quick. The tests ran okay. Although it says one test is known to fail, I think I have seen. Where is that? Test connect. Can't see that there actually. It was known to fail. I'm sure I've seen that pass before. That's what I'm thinking of another test. Um, MTR. So it looks like there's an MTR program in test MySQL test suite. Another one in storage in our base. Uh, let's do push the suite. Try it in there. Oops, I'm gonna spell it right. And then for this MTR program and see if that runs as a directory. Oh, well, I don't know why. That's disappeared. Um, it does say skip test is on. This whole test for this Maria DB connector C, which should not support without additional setup. But that just says skip tests on. I'm 
Let's see what this tells us. See anything there? It says skip tests on. Part with unit test is on. Yeah, I don't know. Guess it could be because I've built it without the server on. Let me um, start all over again. I don't normally have problems building MySQL, although it's uh, one of the slightly bigger packages. It's certainly never given me any problems before that I can recall. So let's just try doing the flat out build. without any changes. So you can see there's even more dependencies there that it's looked for. That I'll mention they're including Java for some reason. Um, and Java does get installed. Um, so let's build. Uh, yeah, it's taking a little bit longer this time. Well, it could be the fact that without the server, it was a lot quicker. It took uh, was it 10 seconds or something. Um, and maybe the test, the full suite of tests aren't installed because of that. So I'll leave this as uh, built with the server then. I'll remove my little note about the server not being built.
Right, so that has built, and as you can see, it took a lot longer because we're building the actual server. So let's run the test. Let's see how long this takes this time. Okay, so there's a few more tests now. It's 71, I think it was about 25 or 26 before. Okay, there's that test connect failed, as was mentioned there. So now let's have a look at this directory. Uh, yes, we have got MySQL test. So it's obviously these extended tests can only be run when the server has been built. So let's try it once more. This looks like it should work. I'll time this and wait for that to finish. Yeah, it started off now.
Okay, so there were three tests that failed. Um, it says that a few tests may fail, so that's probably those three. Um, mainly due to character set issues. Let's see if we can find one. That's skipped. Skipped. You see, oh, there's a couple there. Yeah, UTF-8. So, yes, it is to do with, yeah, KOIR. Yep, so that's okay. I'm happy with that. That's a good result. So we can install this now. Uh, just make install. And it says if you have Linux PAM installed, which you do move the PAM module and configuration file, install by this package as the root user. So let's do that one. And it's interesting. So that's not there. So, no, it doesn't look like he's installed that. Let's try that one. No, that doesn't exist either. That's interesting. No, it doesn't look like there's any file with that name. Um, now whether that's something that a switch should have been sent or it didn't detect the PAM was installed, I don't know. So yeah, there is no files in, in that user share directory, there's just directories so I'm not quite sure what's happened there um, credit basic configuration file now I found when I was doing the oh, go back to user super user um, I found that when I was do my Myth TV. I found that this file wasn't adequate. It didn't allow Myth TV to work properly because this option was in force. So I found that I had to disable that. So I'm going to disable that now um, in case I do decide to um, install Myth TV on here. Uh, But I would have thought that anything else in the BLFS book, it wouldn't affect it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have it at that setting. Um, you can now install a database and change the ownership to the unprivileged user group. Okay, further configuration rise requires the MariaDB servers running. Start the server using the following commands. Okay, set a root password. And shut down the server. So I put the root password in. So this is a separate password from the system root. This is the root user for MariaDB. And then 
we'll go to the BLFS boot scripts. And let's do push D and do make install my SQL. And that should be it. So we can now start that. And that looks like that's okay. So let's do pop D and tidy that up. Oh, should have done that from here actually. And that should be done. Uh, didn't delete that one. Okay, so that, like I say, needs to be reinstalled for Sphinx, which requires PYTest, which is what we're trying to build. So that's a cyclical um, dependency there. Uh, PostgreSQL, um, not really bothered by that, to be quite honest. Uh, if you need to install it, probably got most of these installed as it is. Yep, we've got all of these actually, except for Mick Kerberos, uh, except for FOP. So yeah, I'm not going to really bother with that, I don't think. So as far as this build's concerned, we can install, oops. Did I click on that to, yeah, I did. Copy link address. We can download this. So these options here we can add in the with Barclay DB because we've got that and LDAP we've got that installed as well so we could install both of those options Okay, now let's run make to build it. That's done. Make minus J1 test. Okay, that's all passed by the looks of it. Um, so it's failed to open ODBC even though we installed that. No default driver. Oh, it says it loaded the driver okay there. So our source name not found, no default driver specified. Okay, so maybe that's just a configuration uh, issue with uh, Unix ODBC, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, it's not issued any errors as such, so that's okay. Let's do an install, and that's done. So now it will install Apache. Uh, oh, 
Oh, APR, that's right. PCRA Brotley. Did we install that in the end? I can't remember. Oh, yes, we did. Barkley DB, we've got Jensen's next. Okay, so this hasn't got any dependencies. Okay, so we've got a fix to do with said, and we configure and build it. And run some tests. So one's been skipped there, but apart from that, it looks like a pass. Sudo make install, and that's Jensen done. So the next package we need, we've got Linux ML2 is Lua. So this hasn't got any dependencies. Uh, again, I think this might be one of the packages that had several different versions, if I remember rightly previously, but it's not necessarily the case now, but it's something to bear in mind. A required patch. Some packages check for the package config file for Lua, which is created with this. Install Lua with this, so as a patch, and then make Linux. That's done. Make test. This will run the interpreter and print its version. Yep. More comprehensive tests can be performed if you downloaded the test suite tarball. All oh, right, that's that version there. I didn't see that one. So let's download that and move that back to the BLFS directory. Uh, all right, those tests need to be executed after package is installed. That's what we defer to the description below. Okay, so as the root user, uh, SU will install the package. And then it says here we describe only the basic tests, untile the tarball and change the Lua test directory. So it's dash tests. Then issue this command. If the test finisher out there, you'll see a message contain the string final OK. So let's do time, run that, and yep, final OK, it says at the end. So that's all OK. So that's Lua done. Apache again, and we've just got rsync to build, which needs popped. I think pop's been installed when I did the um, UEFI installation, but I'll install it again. It doesn't need to be reinstalled, but I'll install it again just just for this this video, the purpose of this video. So I don't need to download it. So I've already installed it. And it's quite a simple package anyway, as you can see. So 
So configure and make. Run the tests. It's okay and install it. So that's finished. So I won't put that list because it's already in there. I will put it at the bottom where it belongs. And we'll go back to our sync and install this. So I'm not going to run this as a daemon or as a server, an async server. No need for that. This is just a normal desktop. So I'll just copy this configure command. Check for any other options. No, it's just describing what's been put in there. And we'll use that configure command. Okay, so now we'll build that. That's done. And we'll test it. Okay, I just noticed that I haven't cleared up popped and that I've downloaded our sync and built it within the pop directory, but I'll resolve that afterwards. So let's install it. Didn't build any documentation. This information is if you're, um, oh, this is for accessing remote files. Oh, for, that's to access remote files in OpenSSH, which we've got. So this is to set up the server, which I'm not going to install. So that's complete. So I'll tidy up our sync, move the our sync table back to BLFS and tidy popped up. And I think I'll leave it like that. Where is it? There is there. I'll leave it at that for now and carry on with Apache in the next session. Um, but it should be ready to build. We've got all the dependencies loaded that we need.